So the iPhone 14 Plus has been out for a little bit of time now, but the iPhone 15 is that latest and greatest generation that Apple has just made. So let's go and see how both of these iPhones compare against one another. If you want to pick up either the 14 Plus or the iPhone 15, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both these iPhones, we are getting a little bit of a different type of experience between both. So the iPhone 14 Plus that came out in 2022 on the front has that 6.7 inch Super Retina XR OLED display. And it's a very good panel for the most part. It looks great, colors get very sharp, and there's not really a lot to complain about here. You know, I'm a fan of the iPhone 14 Plus, and I definitely do think Apple did a pretty good job with this display back then. It's a big panel, it's bigger than the iPhone 15, and I definitely do think, I mean, you're still getting the notch, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it can be kind of an annoying thing for some people. But like I said, I think Apple did a great job here. And once again, there's just not a lot to complain about. With the iPhone 15, you're now getting a dynamic island display on this specific phone. So it is a smaller device, so keep that in mind. But both these iPhones are the same exact price at $799. So it's kind of funny that you're either getting last year's big phone, or you're getting this year's, you know, smaller phone. Now on the front of the iPhone 15, you're getting that 6.1 inch Super Retina XR display. It's a very good panel, like I stated. And once again, there's just not a lot to complain about here. I think Apple did a tremendous job with a specific phone. It's, you know, small, little bit of display around it, a little bit of bezel around it, but you are getting that dynamic island, which is really nice. That was like last year's flagship feature. So I'm very happy that we're getting that type of capability on this specific device, which is honestly very, very cool. Now on the sides, there's a little bit of a difference here too. So the 14 plus you're getting that like flat side, which I think is great. Once again, there's not like a lot to complain about here, but it's like a you know flat side. The 15, you're getting this curved side to it. So it really just depends on how you look at it. Some people may prefer the curved side. I think it is actually a really nice touch and it actually feels really good in the hand. On the bottom, you are getting a lightning port on the iPhone 14 plus. But on the iPhone 15, you're getting a USB-C port. This is a massive change this year. I think for the time being, for the next like year, it's probably not going to be a big deal. But once Apple takes way more advantage of the iPhone you know, USB-C port and they start changing and adding a lot more things, I cannot wait to see what Apple ends up doing with this specific port. It's going to be very cool. I'm very much looking forward to it. And that in and of itself is one of the coolest things about going up to an iPhone 15 coming from the older iPhones, in my opinion. Now on the back, there's a slight change here. Some people may not even be able to tell over the camera, but you are getting on the 14 plus that standard glass back, which I felt, you know, was really nice. I liked having that standard glass back. It was very cool. I had a great time with it. But now on the iPhone 15, you're now getting that frosted glass back, which is very cool. Once again, having a frosted glass back is a very cool feature. And that's probably one of my most favorite things going up to the iPhone 15 as well. The fact that we have frosted glass backs on all of those iPhone models is so cool. And once again, one of my probably most favorite features of this generation of iPhones. So on the outside, those are pretty much the main differences. There's not a lot of like crazy, th I mean, there's a lot of crazy things. It's not like the number of changes they've done, but I think USB-C and Dynamic Island are some of the bigger changes here. But if you like a bigger phone, you can definitely go for the 14 plus. Now, in terms of the camera setups on the back, like I said, kind of similar setups, but I mean, nothing crazy, but you are getting some improvements, which I'm really happy about. So on the iPhone 14 plus, basically like that dual 12 megapixel camera, wide and ultra wide, you know, standard lenses, you're getting, you know, 0.5x zoom and 1x zoom on the iPhone 14 plus, which basically gave us 5x zoom and 0.5x zoom with the ultra wide lens. You're getting 4K 60 on the back of both these phones, which is really nice, but there are some bigger changes with the 15. So for one, you're getting a 48 megapixel main angle lens, which is really cool. It's still having the ultra wide camera, pretty much the same thing, but you're also getting 10x zoom on the iPhone 15. So this is like double the amount of zoom you could do on the iPhone 14 plus. This is a massive feature. And if you're somebody who takes a lot of photos or videos on your iPhone, maybe the iPhone 15 would be the one that makes more sense. You're getting the better camera setup here, which is really cool. The resolutions are the same, but I'll tell you, if you're okay with the 14 camera, like you're going to be perfectly fine. I still use my iPhone 13 Pro camera all the time. I still even make some videos on my channels from this phone and I have tremendous experience with it and I have so much fun with it. Like it's a very, very good camera. I definitely would say though, if you're trying to go like for the better camera, the 15 is probably the better way to go, but I still think the 14 plus camera is still very good, but by far for sure, the 15s are definitely at the, I guess they... They've definitely made more improvement with the 15 camera this year than I think they did from the 13 to the 14, from the iPhone 13 to the iPhone 14, if that makes sense. So that kind of covers it up there. In terms of software longevity, this is going to be a clear, obvious winner. The iPhone 15 is going to be the one that's going to last the longest amount of time potentially. So you are going to be getting the longer lasting phone from an iPhone like the iPhone 15 over the iPhone 14 plus. So take it as you will. 
But if you want the iPhone that's going to last the longest amount of time, the iPhone 15 is going to be the one that would make the most amount of sense for me to recommend to people. Again, it's not like a perfect iPhone, but it's really good for what you're getting. And I'm still, to this day, a very big fan of the iPhone you know, 14 series. But definitely, if you want the longer lasting one, the iPhone 15 is going to be the one for you. But the 14 Plus is still going to be here for so many years. Like for us to even talk about it right now is not even like, it's not even relevant. We'll have to wait like four years to even start seeing some big differences between these two. So that kind of covers it up from that perspective as well. Now, from the performance side of things, this is like a slight difference. It's not the biggest change in the world, but we did go with the 14 plus. We had that Apple A15 bonnet chip inside of it with six gigabytes of RAM. Now up to the iPhone 15s that also, that basically have the newer chipset. So the Apple A16 bonnet chip inside now with six gigs of RAM as well. So we are now finally getting into that point where we are getting one new generation of chipset from our base iPhones. So what do we mean by this? Well, last year, Apple basically put the same exact iPhone chipset that was inside the previous generation 13, specifically the 13 Pro, inside of the 14 Plus. So now that we have the iPhone 15s with that A16 bonding chip, that means that we are now getting a newer chipset this year from both the iPhone 14 and the 13, finally. So now, if you want to look at it from a performance side, you are definitely getting the better performing phone from the iPhone 15 than the iPhone 14 Plus. But by how much, right? That's the main question. To be honest, the 14 Plus performance-wise is still a very good performing phone. Like I've said before in so many different aspects of the 14 Plus, I've had an amazing time with this phone, I've had an amazing time with this camera, and I've had an amazing time with this performance. So I don't really feel like I would go from a 14 to a 15, especially a 14 Plus to a 15, because the performance or because anything like that. I feel like the iPhone 14 Plus's performance is still very good. It's still plenty for me. And I don't really feel the reason to go from an older iPhone like the 14 Plus to a 15 just based off the performance alone. There are other reasons to go and upgrade, but the performance is just not one of those things. Things. My iPhone 15 is a very good performing phone. I've just played tons of games on it, Genshin Impact, Roblox, some random Subway Surfer, some non-intensive games as well too, and I've had a great time with it. But on my iPhone 14, I've done tons and tons of comparisons between this one and the Galaxy S23s, the Pixel 7s, the Pixel 6s, all the phones around the you know atmosphere, and I still feel like the 14 is still a very good you know performing phone as well. So the main advantage for the 14 Plus, I would tell you, is probably battery life. You are getting 26 hours of video playback from Apple's own website on the 14 Plus, over 20 hours on the iPhone 15. So you are definitely getting the overall better performing battery life phone from the iPhone 14 Plus than on the iPhone 15 which is really massive and that's really big because if you're wanting the phone that's going to be giving you better performance overall in terms of battery, the iPhone 14 Plus is definitely the better way to go from this specific perspective as well. So to kind of sum up this whole entire comparison, what I'll definitely tell you is, I definitely do think that the iPhone 15 would be the iPhone I would recommend a majority of people to buy. If you just want to go ahead and buy the latest iPhone, buy this one. You know, it makes more sense unless you're going through and buying one in the used market then go for the iPhone you know, 14 Plus. You can probably get it for like 600 something dollars now, but the iPhone 15 for it, being the same price as the 14 plus in the brand new market, I would just recommend people to go and buy the iPhone 15 because you're getting the latest phone with the latest IO with the USB-C port, better cameras. Like this is a really good upgrade coming from the 14, but I would probably say if you want to keep your 14 plus, go for it. I wouldn't upgrade from a 14 to a 15, but if I don't have either one, I'm definitely going for the 15 and it's actually a pretty big difference this year. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, hold on.